We're back for another exciting episode of The Spicy Life. I am your relationship expert and magnetic matchmaker, Spicy Mari. I know you've missed me back in full effect here to have a fun and exciting episode of The Spicy Life, beating the always a bridesmaid mindset. To join me in the G spot, that is guest spotlight, I have the beautiful, the lovely Marcy Booth. She is the current event director at Think LA, a premier marketing, advertising, and media trade association in Southern California. California. As a leader within the organization, Marcy has strategically helped to create and diversify all aspects of the event planning process. Before Think LA, she cultivated her talents and expertise in event operations and logistics for companies including Wider Circle, SBE, and the Grammy Museum. Her passion for events has created opportunities to become an industry leader as the current president of the International Live Events Association of Los Angeles and member of the California Event Coalition Board of Directors. Ooh, this girl is hot. She's on fire. Most recently, Marcy was included in the 2021 Biz Bash 500 list for corporate events and strategy. And Marcy Booth is also a phenomenal client of mine. (laughs) Super excited to have you on the show, Marcy. Uh, You have been working for me with me for a while now. And I feel like I've really conquered the mindset aspect of um, relationships, dating, manifesting, and being really a cheerleader and advocate for love, right? In the beginning, maybe came in with um, some, you know, discrepancies around like relationships and dating. And I feel like there's been such a huge shift that I want other women to be able to explore this. And I love when you brought up the topic to me of like how to beat the bridesmaid mindset. And I'm like, oh, we got to share this episode. We got to do it. (laughs) Yeah, it's a big one. That's a big one to get past when you want to be married, you want to have kids, you want everyone else has it, but you. So it's, absolutely, it's, you have to conquer it. Absolutely. And I'm so excited because this is my first episode back since uh, pushing out a human. So um, this is going to be super fun. <laughs> I took a few weeks off. Um, I'll probably do a whole episode, you guys, dedicated to uh, Prince and Shay, my royal baby, my little superior baby boy. But today I really want to di- uh, deep dive into the mindset and the approach of, you know, celebrating love for others even. And so to join me, um, Marcy, I always start off with you telling us how you first fell in love with yourself. This is the spice breaker. So you're going to kind of just walk us through what that process looked like for you. And then we'll go into like all my questions that I have for you. Oh, okay. Um, (laughs) No, I I obviously listened to your podcast a a ton. So I was like trying to figure out like, when did I really fall in love with myself? Um, I think growing up, I'm from Ohio, wonderful state. I literally was always in someone else's shadow. So I thought that was really what my purpose was, was to be someone else's like, um, like cheerleader. So when I finally turned 30 and I felt like I didn't need to, um, have people like kind of direct me on like where my life should go, I started to get really, really comfortable of like, wow, like I'm like an amazing person. Like I'm really smart. I'm, you know, driven. I know how to like do things. I don't need everyone to kind of like gratify me. So once I turned 30, I really turned the table and was like, okay, like I'm dope. Like what what was I thinking this whole time? (laughs) So 30 was the start. I think working with you took it to a whole nother level. Um, so it was, yeah, I got like a new, um, boost, if you will, a boost of confidence. That Ooh, I like. Marcy boost. We should change your name from boost to boost. Sure. I mean, find a new branding moment, branding moment, <laughs> branding yeah, moment. I'm just thinking, <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I love that you've been so dedicated to the self-growth process. And also um, just exploring, you know, what does love look like for you now? Did you actually, and tell the truth, did you fall in love? Because I always do this follow-up. Did you fall in love with someone else before you fell in love with yourself? Think of your relationship timeline. You fell in love with yourself first? Yes. Okay. I think I always thought I could be in love or I thought it was, Mm -hmm. but it was always lust. Mm. I think a lot of us women can relate to that. (laughs) I was confused, but yes. no, I felt like, oh, for sure. well, what you're not confused about is how to shift your mindset. Okay. A lot of times, and I, I could even title this, like how to avoid being a hater ass friend. Um, but a lot of people, one thing that, you know, I find, and this is common 
is a lot of people will um, avoid being friends or avoid hanging out with friends that are in relationship, okay? Because they don't like the way that it makes them feel. Um, they don't like the um, way that it reflects, you know, maybe poorly on their relationship status. So they avoid hanging out with friends that are happily in love or maybe just in a relationship. Mm -hmm. And they start to get in this vibration of um, feeling sorry for themselves or being upset that they're single or why not me, why them and not me. And so I love that we're doing this because a lot of times we get it twisted and we think that if we avoid people in a relationship or we avoid this, you know, I want a true love or admitting that we really want a relationship that we're protecting ourselves. Yes. And so you're going to clear up some of this, uh, some of these myths for us. Marcy, when people hear about bridesmaid or hear, you know, that you're going to be a bridesmaid, um, there's a sometimes negative stigma with being the bridesmaid and never the bride. Um, why do you think that people hate on bridesmaids though? I mean, honestly, I've been a bridesmaid nine times. Okay. So my friends oh. love me to be in the, in the mix. I am, I will say I'm a really good maid of honor and bridesmaid. Like, <laughs> like I'm really amazing, but it's, this is a time for you to celebrate your friend your time is going to come for sure. But this is a time for you to like, truly like let go of all of your, you know, qualms on like, oh, why is it not me? Or I can't believe they're getting married and it's only been a few, like few months. No, like this is a time for you to truly celebrate so that when you have that high vibrational energy, yeah. it's boomeranging back to you. It's coming back your way because you're putting it out there in a very intentional way. And being a bridesmaid Facts. is very intentional. Facts. Um, yeah, because you also have to be in good spirits to make sure that the, you know, bride is in good spirits as well. Cause it's a transference of emotion too. If you've got a funky attitude, you're going to get a bride that has a funky attitude because you're showing up and not showing, you know, out for her. And mm -hmm. so it's a ship, you know, we can feel it. And then two weddings are a lot of stress. So, you know, being, <laughs> being a lot of stress. Um, so you want to come with like the best energy, the best, you know, intentions and the best attitude or it's going to affect, you know, the rest of, the, you know, the bride tribe. 110%. I mean, I, I was even in a wedding two days after my dad died. Oh my I God. was in this mindset. It was also like, I knew like, this is my best friend. I needed a distraction, but in every picture, every like dance, all of this stuff, I was having a good time because of, Hey, for me, I needed that kind of yeah. distance, but she was someone that I loved so much and I was so happy for her. It was truly pure love for her. And that was something that like, if you could, if I could do that, man, like being a bridesmaid is not that bad. Pricey, <laughs> but not that bad. <laughs> and let's not forget to weddings are a great place to meet men or women. Yes. Like I'm, I'm, I love the movie Wedding Crushers, uh, but <laughs> wedding, weddings are a great place to actually, you know, dance, cake, you know, people are, you know, they're celebrating life. There's gifts. It's a really good time. And everybody's coming together. Yes. To celebrate this couple, but also be on the lookout and, you know, speak to someone while you're at a wedding that you could potentially be interested in, you know, ask them for a dance, ask them how they know, you know, the bride and groom, uh, you know, accidentally bump into them and then be like, Oh, you know, sorry, you know, didn't see you there. Let's grab some champagne together. Let me make it up to you. Like there's so many different ways that you can, you know, get in with someone while you're at a wedding. I'm guilty of um, picking up people from at weddings. Uh, <laughs> they didn't make it, they didn't make it to the hubby mode, no. um, but definitely had some good times from people that I met at weddings. But really I want, you know, people to go into them with an open mindset that it's not, you know, this, this doom label that it's actually means, you know, that you're in preparation, that you are like next in line. If you think about bridesmaids as a line, you know, mm -hmm. standing next to the bride, you're next in line, your turn is coming. And best believe, um, we don't grab the thing that goes around the thigh. We grab the bouquet, right? The bouquet, yeah, the yes. bouquet. Um, ladies, get your bouquet on. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and it's funny because you're absolutely right. You're kind of in line for the next thing for when you're, it's your turn. But all of my friends that I've been in their weddings, they are the ones that they know what I'm manifesting and they're manifesting it for me as well. So they're already in the mindset of like, oh, 
We already know where we want to have your bachelorette party. We already know what we're yes. going to do when, you know, for this. So they're already piping me up for a wedding. I mean, I'm an event planner, so mine is planned, but they're already in the spirit of like, woo, when we are get walking down the aisle, That's like, right. how can you not get excited when your friends are like giving you that type of energy? For sure. I love this. I love this. You guys, you got to be paying attention to Marcy. She's hitting some, she's giving some gems. She's hitting on the money right here. And so what we're going to discuss um, on today's episode, I'm going to give you guys the, t- the outline in advance, um, the good, the bad, and the ugly, the energy boomerang, the abundant life formula, which Marcy is going to give us, respecting everyone's process and it be full circle moments. Um, oh, no, you had that spelled right. It'll be full circle moments. I think I went hood with it. Um, <laughs> it'd be full circle moments. Okay. Hey, it'll be, <laughs> it'll be full circle moments. Okay. So Marcy, <laughs> walk me through this from the beginning. Um, what's the good, the bad, and the ugly for you? You know, I, you, you hit it right on the head when it's like you avoid every person who's in a relationship, who's happy. And you even, I mean, I'm totally can say I did this. I hated every single one of my friends, their husbands, their boyfriends. Mm-hmm. I was like, trash, like whatever. And instead of having this mindset of truly like, well, there's some good to it. There might be some bad. There might be some ugly. Even though it's not my relationship, I still need to support that because mm-hmm. your friends are going to come to you and they're going to say, oh my God, like I found this great man. They're also going to say, oh my God, like he was 10 minutes late for the date. He's also, they're also going to push forward and be like, oh my gosh, like this guy is not the one you still have to be there to support your friend. And I started to pick up on that because my friends were noticing, they're like, how do you hate all of our boyfriends? Like, how do you (laughs) hate them all? (laughs) You don't like any of them? (laughs) Yeah. You don't like nothing about them. Not even like their look. And I started realizing like for me to truly be supportive. Like I have to support them throughout the whole thing. I can't hate on them when they tell me a bad story. I can't hate on them when they start, um, you know, men start slipping up. You have to be there to support that friend no matter what, because they're going to do the same thing back to you. Yep. For sure. Absolutely. And so I think what you're sitting on or what you're touching on is like the consistency component, like Mm -hmm. making sure that through the trajectory of the relationship, you are showing support and, you know, friends can even start to resent you when they see that you're not happy for them. They stop telling you stuff. They stop sharing with you. And so what you're hitting on is, you know, that we need to be showing up for our friends, even if they show up a little less for us. Cause you know, they stop keeping plans when they get in a relationship, which I always warn you guys about, do not um, cut your friends off just because you found a little boo thing. It's going to be your friend who you run back to as soon as that relationship ends and you got to start from scratch. And it'll be, you know, our shoulders that you're crying on, hoping that, you know, we're still there. And we will be, we will be. But like, don't forget about the homies in the process of of love. (laughs) Okay, what is this energy boomerang? Talk to us about the energy boomerang. Yeah, so the energy boomerang is when you start already on a high vibrational level. When you have that high vibrational energy and you're passing it along to everyone from a really intentional place, not from a fake place of like, I'm so excited for you, but it's Mm -hmm. like, dang girl, like you got the right dude. It starts to boomerang back to you. It starts coming back. So when you get those good things, those, those good moments, they're instantly like, oh, she was there for me. Like when I had this amazing relationship, Mm -hmm. when I had my child, they're instantly going to celebrate you. So having that understanding of like, it's, it's always going to come back to you. If you come from a real intentional place of love, that's, that's number one for me. But what if you are salty though how do you shift your energy from coming from an intentional place of you know trying to get to an intentional place of love Mm -hmm. when you really are like my life freaking sucks why does everybody have a relationship except me you know how do you do that shift how do you shift to that happy place and I think that's a very good good question the thing that I personally did was I started looking at every person's relationship everything that they were getting that I wanted as kind of like a painless lesson for myself. Hmm. So I got to see like, wow, she, I'm so excited that she's having a baby. Okay. Baby daddy might not be ready to commitment, commit to her, but let me look at this, like really like from like a airplane point of view of like, I see what she's doing and that doesn't work for me. Mm -hmm. Like I can't accept X, Y, and Z 
or maybe like, oh, that does make sense of why she went down that road. Maybe if I were more open, it, and it opens your eyes to different things in the way that yeah. people are handling the situation. I know as someone who is single, I, and someone who, who, when I came to you, I was very like, here's what I'm going to do. And everyone has to like fall in line with it. I'm able to see what everyone else is going through so that I'm not having to like go through it myself and mm-hmm. then go back to that place of like, eh, I don't want anyone to touch me, look at me. Uh, you know, I'd rather just be by myself eating, you know, Dunkin' Donuts donuts. Like <laughs> I have to like, I changed my mindset on like, let me figure out what I can learn from each person. Mm-hmm. And I've learned a lot of really interesting things from situations um, because there are some things that like, I, I was always like, I would never have a child before marriage. Like I have mm. to be married. I'm actually fine with it. I don't know why I had that um, belief before yeah. um, because I've seen so many amazing families come together, even though they didn't have a piece of paper. Um, so I'm learning as my friends are, are going through it so that I'm more prepared and open for when someone does come to me and I'm not already like, here's the belief I have because I just didn't pay attention to what everyone else was doing. So looking at your friends' relationships and the choices that they make as learning lessons for yourself, Mm -hmm. give us some more learning lessons. What else have you learned by observing and paying attention to your friends' choices? You know, well, like I said, I'm from Ohio. So pretty much all of my friends were married at like 23, 24. Mm -hmm. I was obviously extremely jealous. How can I not be married at this point? (laughs) And all of them were divorced. And I saw the reason they jumped into a relationship. They saw, um, you know, their friends and, and people telling them like, oh, when's he going to give you a ring? And, and I saw that and I was like, I don't want, if someone's going to ask me that, I don't want to feel pressured to like, mm-hmm. I got to find someone. And I started to realize like, um, when people would ask me that, cause I do still have family, you know, family members that ask that I say, you know, God's making that man for me. So I have to just be open to who he brings and I'll be, you'll be the first to know when he comes. I'm <laughs> Cause you keep asking. And that's the, that was another, that was a big lesson for sure, because getting married young can be an amazing thing, mm-hmm. but not everyone understands truly what marriage is. Like when I was 24, I, I tell people all the time, like, I can't believe you're not married. I would have been divorced. I wanted a wedding. For sure. I wanted a wedding. I didn't want a marriage. I wanted a party, open bar, a really cute dress, and like my friends around me, I didn't want the hard work of like every single day with the man. And yeah. I think that was the mindset of a lot of my friends, unfortunately, that are going, that went through divorces or they're no longer in those relationships, but they've moved into that mindset of like, no, I really do want someone that's got my back. And like, and they're in maybe, you know, relationships now or marriages now that we're on the same level now. Like it totally makes sense. Like, okay. I see. It's almost a blessing that we didn't get what we wanted in our twenties. Cause, or even in high school, I thought everybody who I was dating in high school was going to be my husband. Then college, I thought they were going to be my husband. And then in my twenties, I thought they were going to be my husband. I'm like, thank God (laughs) they did not become my husband. (laughs) Or even I just think about like, if the person I really, really wanted in like high school, college, if I had a child with them, oh my gosh, I would be devastated. I surely wouldn't be in California. I know that I'd be like (laughs) doing, I don't even know. It'd be crazy. I, I like what you said earlier about um, when like family or friends are asking you, you know, when's it going to happen? Um, and you're like, well, you know, God's working on him. Um, mm-hmm. One thing that that brought up or maybe like triggered for me was that just like we are a work in progress and we're continuously working on self-growth and self-improvement, um, you even going through the spicy life process, uh, your partner could potentially be a work in progress too. Like he may be going through someone's program right now working on himself. And so this um, idea or this notion that like, he's just supposed to fall on our lap or the moment that we decide that we're ready, that's when he's supposed to appear. But we don't know what process or where, what phase in his process he may be going through. We don't know what relationship he may need to be ending, what situation he needs to get out of. We don't know, you know, what's going to be the next step in his life that is his awakening that makes him prepared. Cause for a man, it really is about like timing that moment that they decide like, hmm, I'm ready to settle down. They're, they're going to take initiative yeah. and, you know, make moves in order to find them a partner. And so I just feel like there's, you know, I don't want to um, tell you ladies or and fellas 
to be patient. I want you guys actually to be very active in the preparation for your partner, because there's going to be some things that you're going to be able to teach in your growth that you're going to be able to, you know, share with them. And you want to be prepared at the moment that they're in front of you to be able to hit them with the wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, let's get it. And so, um, I appreciate what you're saying as far as this, you know, mindset process is, um, and you know, that your turn is coming that, you know, it's, it's really this shift in your attitude. Um, what do you feel like has been the biggest shift thus far in your attitude if, from old Marcy to mm. 2021 new Marcy? I think the biggest shift has been that I actually believe I deserve what is supposed to come to me. That was the number one thing I feel like, well, there's a lot of things I learned from the spicy life, but that was one thing that really, I thought I was confident before. I thought I was so prepared. I done, I did all these classes on relationships but I actually never actually thought I deserved someone. So when I was started going, like working with you, I was like, well, I only pick people on dating sites that I know will be attracted to me. And that was like, you're like, what are you talking about right now? Like you're a beautiful <laughs> person. I was like, no, like they're, they're not going to be into me. And that mindset, mindset shift for me, like the, the men that I am, you know, dating and they're pursuing me now are night and day from mm. what I would have dated even six months ago. Yes. So it, that was the shift. Like I shouldn't be limiting myself because I just don't think I deserve something or I'm not like X, Y, and Z Susie Q over there who, you know, right. is size one and da, da, da. I don't have to do that. Like I have so much to give and I learned what I can give. Yep. Um, and, and that was the big shift for me. I think one thing that's been amazing to see in your journey and in your process is like what you were dating, right? To the high quality and, you know, caliber of men that you are selecting, actually choosing now. You're not just, you know, I'll take what I can get or whatever wants me. You're like out here and like, nope, I want this, this, and this. And, you know, you've created your pizza, you know, like what you're looking for. You are very solid on that. And you're also willing to leave behind what's not for you. Versus a lot of women um, who are, you know, operating from a fear, you know, based mentality or a scarcity mindset when it comes to the quality of men out there are holding on a lot longer than they should in the belief of potential, but that potential not having any true evidence of, you know, anything coming to reality. And so there has to be some evidence to support someone's potential. There has to be behaviors that actually show like this is someone that you can bet on. And so- I love that you are recognizing that and that the that you're only fooling with quality people who are on your level now and it yeah. keeps improving each time. It, the, your, the quality of people that you're dating, you guys, should improve with each person. You should not be going backwards. You should only be going forward. So if the quality of people that you're dating are not uh, elevating with each person, come to the Spicy Life Schedule of free consultation. We need we need to talk. We need to talk. <laughs> but I'm proud of you for, do, you for doing this, Marcy. Thank you. And you know, it's funny, I went to um, brunch yesterday with some friends and we were just talking about my, my last relationship and they're like, well, what if he comes back? Like what I said, you know, I learned what I needed to learn from it. Like I, I gleaned anything I could have, like, I don't think me going back to that, that same um, situation Mm -hmm. is going to add anything to me. And they were like, so shocked. They were like, this could be an amazing husband. I said, but we're not there. Like, Mm -hmm. so even me saying that out loud, because I mean, my friends were like, this girl hangs on for (laughs) way too long to these men who do nothing for her. You know, I I just learned that letting things go sometimes opens up so much more that can come to you. Mm -hmm. For sure. What advice do you have for women who are holding on tight to those guys who are potentially wasting their time? (laughs) <laughs> so much advice. Um, you know, I think the first thing is understanding what your worth is mm-hmm. and understanding, even if this person says X, Y, and Z, what is the consistency that they're showing you that they're doing that? Cause mm-hmm. most men who you're holding on to, they are not showing up. They're not, they're not the, the walk and the, the walk is not the talk. Yeah. Um, the talk is not the walk. They're just spitting game at you and you might be, you know, in it for the D you might be whatever, but at the end of the day, you're not going to get your goal met. If you want to get married, if you want to have a committed relationship, you're holding on to something that consistently is telling you, 
I'm not going to give you what you want unless you come down to my level. And I don't think anyone should ever, you know, lower their, their standards or level for anyone. Um, so that's the number one thing, like know what you are worth, know exactly what you want. And if they are not consistently showing you that, it's time for you to move on and under and find the next person because that person's coming. They're right around the corner. Yes. You just literally have to let go of that other person because you're, when you're, and I've learned this as well, when your energy is connected to someone, mm-hmm. guess what? No one else wants to, they know that your energy is off. They don't want to really be messing with you. So you have to like, seriously, let go, like delete the text messages, yep. block on the Instagram, block on like everything even clubhouse. I've had to do that. Too. <laughs> We're good so at block and release when it's time to move on. <laughs> yes, you, have to, you have to release it fully. Talk to me about the abundant life formula. This sounds interesting. I want to hear more about this. Share with us. So it is the idea of gratitude plus manifesting times consistency is the abundant life. If you are coming from a place all the time where you are really thankful that of your situation, um, and that could be like, oh, I'm so thankful I'm out of that relationship because it was weighing me down. I'm so thankful that, you know, I, I didn't have a child with this man that I was with for five years because we, we weren't the right fit. Um, and manifesting what you want of like, I know my husband's on the, on, around the corner for me and he is going to be successful and loving. Saying those two things and saying it all the time, that is going to get you to a place where it's not even something you need to um, think about. It's nature. It's second nature. So right now I'm manifesting, you know, my husband's around the corner and he is, um, he, he's going to be speaking to me in the same type of language. We're going to have a really open communication. When I'm talking to my friends, my family, whomever about it, I don't say like, I can't wait for my, my husband to come. Like, it's going to be like, so cool. It's like me and my, me and my man are going to be talking like <laughs> thick as thieves. Like we already know, like we're going to be on the same page. So people are finding now, now, now my friends and my family, they're seeing it and they're like, there's a shift. Like, yep. you know what you want. And like, whenever this man comes, like, I can't wait to meet him. Cause you're talking about him. Like he's like, God. well you have to you have to believe because it's the belief that will control the outcome right how you behave how you react how you handle situations Mm -hmm. um and so you speaking it into existence is like one of you know the things but then it's too you know it's not enough to just say it like you actually have to believe that it's coming to really bring it to fruition and then you have to you know say those words over and over and over sometimes so that you can even buy into the story that you're telling. Yes. And then when it comes to the manifestation part, like oftentimes we think that words are enough, but we actually have to do the work and put ourselves out there as well. Mm-hmm. And so I love that you are sharing, you know, your story or, you know, what you're manifesting with your family and friends, because a lot of times what we won't do is be vocal with the people who are closest to us that we're on the market or that we are, you know, ready for the love of our lives to enter our lives. And even with, you know, um, digital dating, which I am absolutely pro, you know, meeting um, online and using all these tools that have been given to us. The number one way though, people are still walking down this aisle till this day is through friends and family, through social events that your friends and family invite you to, or people who they're introducing you to. And that how is usually how you were finding the love of your life. That is still the number one way that people meet their partners. And so when it comes to you professing, like, hey guys, if you know anyone, I'm ready, like put me in the game coach, like referrals are the best, you know, we're willing to take them when it comes to the job hunt. But when it comes to our personal life, you know, we're like, "Mm, I'm good. I'm happy being, you know, an independent woman. I don't need anybody. That is a completely different message that you're sending than the message of, you know, Marcy, you know, I am on the market and I am wanting and willing and ready for love. Do you have anyone or do you know anyone that you think would be a good fit for me? Yeah. You're going to get two different reactions and results when it comes to being set up. 1000%. And I think one thing that in one of our conversations, you said, you know, closed mouths don't get fed. And I totally, <laughs> totally believe that. So I've got my coworkers manifesting this man for me, my mother, my sister, my friends, because I don't know who knows everyone. Mm -hmm. And they might know someone that I, you know, would never even be able to connect with 
but six degrees of separation, yep. I'm letting them know in advance what my abundant life is. Like, yep. I'm happy I released all those other relationships so that I can get the man who's about to communicate me, communicate with me on a daily basis and show, show himself as a worthy um, match. Yep. Not someone that is just, you know, there to waste my time, but no, they're, they're in it to win it just like I am. Absolutely. And I don't think if I didn't say that to everyone, um, cause I wasn't for a long time. I thought it was like, um, like, oh my gosh, like that's so pride, prideful of me to say, how would I ever find anyone that my friends might think is a good match if they're like, oh, she never really says she wants to date anyone. So I'm not going to ask her. We thought you were fine. Yeah, no, I'm not fine. <laughs> well, I want people like, so you guys think of it like this, um, when it comes to your cell phone, having a signal, right? You know, that the more, um, strength and bars that you have, the better your, your Wi-Fi service or the better your signal when it comes to your cell phone. Okay. So you can have one bar, which is like your one mouth that's spreading the word, or you can have full bars, multiple bars that is spreading the word and way more signal with that message getting out there that you are looking for love. And there is strength in numbers. So you can have one bar versus five bars. And that's the difference between that message getting spread quicker when it comes to the frequency and the vibration that you're on. That's mm-hmm. that many more people, that many more soldiers work on your behalf, trying to find you love. And best believe, I know not all of you can sign up for, you know, the Spice Life program or the services, but you can, you know, turn to your friends and, you know, ask them for those referrals. But if you've been nasty and hating and avoiding your friends and, you know, belittling their relationship or talking down on them, you're not going to be the first person they think of when they have a nice guy or, you know, their, their lover's homeboy who's available, you know, or, <laughs> you know, a, a girlfriend, uh, you know, of their girl, like they're not, they're not going to be thinking of you because you've been mean and nasty to people who you allegedly love. So I just want you to keep that in mind when it comes to the mindset part. <laughs> but I love the abundant life formula because I want a ton of abundance for everyone when it comes to relationships and love. And so this is incredible. I love that you gave this Marcy. Now, what is respecting everyone's process? What does that look like? You just kind of touched on it of being that hater mm-hmm. and you are just constantly kind of looking down on people's process because literally it, anything can happen at any time. I, you know, we were just talking about this a couple of days ago where I've seen people get married after, you know, they've been together for like two months. Like mm-hmm. they just had that connection. It worked for them. But why should we look down upon that? Because yeah. it wasn't like what we've seen in like, you know, Cinderella or, you know, Beauty and the Beast. Like we have to respect that that's how they, you know, their process is going. And again, back to that manifesting and abundance, abundant life formula, like I'm respecting that and I'm learning from that. But what I still want is X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to respect that. I'm not going to hate on it. I'm not going to belittle it because every single person is going through different stages. Some of it happens quicker. Some of it happens, you know, takes a long time, but why hate on it? It's not going to do anything good for you besides make you look evil. I love that. Um, And, you know, one thing that we question um, often just as humans is, you know, why them? Why not me? Yes. And some people are like, well, why do I have to get coaching or why do I need to go to a therapist or why do I need to, you know, go to this workshop? Like, why can't I just find love, you know, just like, you know, I don't know, Cynthia did, you know, Cynthia hasn't had to work on herself. She's not even that great of a person. And she already found a partner. You telling yourself that, okay, is what's going to keep you a bridesmaid because, um, (laughs) because you are one, you're not celebrating your friend and you're doing comparison. You're comparing yourself and you are not them. They've lived a completely different life. They have different choices. And majority of the time, you don't even want the partner who they chose. You wouldn't even take the partner who they chose. But the fact that they're in a relationship is what is bothering you, what is making you look at yourself. And it's a reminder that you don't necessarily have, you know, the, the, the partner that you want yet, but that doesn't mean that it's not coming. They're just on a different timeline when it comes to their process. And so I love what Marcy is saying about respecting people's process, because you don't know what all work they put in. You don't know what prayers they were praying. You don't know how much, you know, self-work they may be doing 
or may not be doing, and they might not even require half of the things that you require. Your laundry list or your pizza of your requirements when it comes to the relationship may look completely different than theirs. And what they put out there in the universe may be a lot easier maybe to manifest than what you're asking for. I'm just saying. 1,000%, 1,000%. Because I know I have a, a list. I have quite the list. And not everyone is going to need a list that is, you know, 40, 50 things. Yeah. They might have five, <laughs> maybe 10. But hey, do you, boo boo? Love it. You like it? I love it. Talk to us about uh, it'll be full circle moments. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Full circle so, moments. This really goes back again to a, a bit of manifesting, but every every moment that you're going to encounter with friends, family, you know, coworkers, whatever, it's going to come back full circle. So when you give that support, when you are believing that you deserve, you know, this wonderful man or woman, um, and when you put yourself out there, it's going to come back to you. It's a little bit like the boomerang effect. Mm -hmm. When you continue to really let go of like your, your thoughts that are maybe limiting those mm -hmm. limiting beliefs yeah. and you just truly, you're just being and experiencing and, and showing up at every date, every, you know, um, even text chain on Tinder <laughs> up to it it's going to come back full circle because it's practice. Yep. It is truly practice for what you want. And I didn't believe in practice because as you know, or may not know, I'm just kind of like, let's do it once and get it done with. But I've had to, I've been forced to have to practice mm -hmm. really good communication with men. And I've had to believe that even when they're saying things that I'm like, I don't know if I feel great about that, Understanding that like, if it's not for me and it makes me not feel like a hundred percent, let's release it so that I can practice on someone else that might be better. Who are you? Oh my God. Love, you love, love. <laughs> Junior. I am like so proud. I would weep right now. <laughs> oh, you guys. The things that you're saying, Marcy, you know, seriously, I am so proud of you. I'm like listening to you and I'm like, yes, girl. Yes, this is everything and more. And this is when, when you get to this place, when you get to these, um, this epiphany or this enlightenment of um, appreciating your dating experiences and actually being mindful and present, right? Because a lot of people just become robotic. They do it over and over. And then that's how they get tapped out. They get tapped out and they're like, okay, I give up. Um, I'm going to now go through a detox from, you know, online dating or from dating period. And that might not necessarily what needs to be done. You may need to actually be more present than releasing. You might actually need to show up more because your people aren't even getting to experience your light because you are so, you know, uh, focused on, you know, just going through the motions and, you know, running through as many people as you can or eliminating people based on the red flags that now you're not even appreciating the green flags. And I think you sent me some, uh, a post like that the other day about like, don't forget about the green flags too, um, which, you know, I always appreciate when you guys like tag me in relationship posts, cause I'll be quick to, you know, repost, but it's very true. We've gotten so conditioned as a culture to look for all the negative things and we've become conditioned from past relationships to look for, you know, similarities because we don't want to repeat the same mistakes, but now we have this wall up that we're avoiding, you know, allowing ourselves to truly be close to someone, which is also cock blocking all of the great things that a person may offer as well, because mm -hmm. we're constantly self-sabotaging, looking for those red flags, make, trying to make excuses for why we should walk away. Yes. And it's not that we shouldn't be cognizant of our deal breakers for sure, but we also need to operate in a place of like paying attention, being present, not worried so much about our past, not worried so much about the future, but more worried about who is showing up for me right now. And do I appreciate them? Do I enjoy them in this moment versus am I going to enjoy him three years from now? Um, and can he give me pretty kids? Let's focus on like, do we enjoy the conversation right now? And is there any compatibility that we have to offer? And I think adding on to that is um, not, not getting in, in your way of like, 
you're waiting for him to mess up. Mm -hmm. Cause I used to do that quite a bit. I'm just waiting for him to say something nasty to a waiter. I'm just waiting for him not <laughs> to open the door. I'm just waiting for him to like sneeze and like sneeze on me. Like I, I really, I like was focusing on so many things. Like I couldn't even enjoy the day. Mm -hmm. Like I was just like waiting for like, oh, what's going to happen so I can like not go out with him again. And yeah. it was like, okay, he's actually really nice. And like, okay, like, let me get out of my own way. Because if I were, if, if I dated the way that I was dating before, mm -hmm. like I would live in pandemic 24 seven. I would just be <laughs> in my house all day. Wouldn't be talking to no one. I would be on these things. I used to go on these dating binges where I wouldn't date anyone. And they, I'd be like, I'm on a man fast, but it'd be like a four year man fast. Four year manifest. <laughs> so, exactly. Like that's not really. It wasn't anything. a manifest. It was a man fast. <laughs> it was a manifest. It was manifesting needed. Avoidance actually. But a lot of people will do that. They think that um, they need to, you know, clear their space and energy from the thing that originally hurt them mm -hmm. and that it will clear their mind and then they'll come back and refocus. But a lot of times when we do that, right, when we go through this clarity piece, um, it is healthy for you to detox. Should you need to, you know, cleanse yourself? But we'll oftentimes use it as an excuse to not have to interact. We'll start to use it as an excuse to not have to engage, to not have to, you know, share, to not have to communicate with the thing that we are actually trying to attract. And I've spoken to you guys before about law of attraction. You need to be madly in love with the thing that it is that you say that you want. So if you want love, you need to be madly in love with love. If you want a man, you need to love the hell out of men. And if you also want a relationship, you need to love the hell out of yourself to believe that you are worthy enough to attract a partner who's going to love the hell out of you. If you're not doing those things, you are messing up law of attraction and law of vibration. So we're trying to help you guys out over here. Um, but I know that a lot of times it's hard to get out of our own way, even when it comes to like being that friend you know, that is, you know, gosh, you know, another, you know, baby shower invitation, uh, another, you know, wedding invite. Uh, when's it going to be me? When's it going to be me? Instead of asking yourself, when's it going to be you? What you need to be telling yourself is I'm so happy for them. And I'm so excited that my love is coming soon. I'm so happy for their love. I'm so excited that my love is coming soon. You guys need to start telling yourselves that. And really believe that it is coming because if you don't believe that it's coming you will manifest that as well yes one thousand percent just like we can manifest positive we can also ma really manifest really well negative some of us are better at manifesting negative than we are positive a lot of us are better at manifesting negative than we are positive but i've switched that mindset around because i was very good about manifesting everything i didn't want yeah and it would always come to me and i'd be like how did i find this guy who doesn't have a job and like doesn't have a car but I want them to have all those things so it's all in the power of the tongue folks for tongue. sure um Marcy you are going to share with us though um you're on the market you are um a beautiful bachelorette uh anyone who sees this episode I want them to know that they have a a, a chance to slide through your DM or to um, reach out to me so that I can set you up with them. Whatever it is, your partner is out there and he is coming. And you know this to be true. You feel it in your soul. You feel it in your spirit. Um, share a little bit about what you are looking for in a partner. Well, um, I'm looking for someone who, um, I'm an alpha, alpha, alpha woman. So I know that I don't need an alpha, alpha, alpha man. I need a man who is truly a sweetheart, who has um, a spiritual side that um, believes in just good things happening. They're relaxed and chill because I am so like, I'm an event planner. So I'm like constantly on the details. Um, and someone who truly is, um, they believe in love. Like they want to have a family. They want to have the marriage. They don't want the white picket fence and all that. They want truly like a partner in crime and to build like a little kingdom for ourselves. So that's what I'm looking for. And it would be amazing if he's over six foot. <laughs> we just had to add that little caveat in there. Oh my gosh. Um, 
He will be. We're gonna we're gonna manifest that for you. <laughs> but I like that you threw in there that you um you know because I've done a lot of episodes on like you know alpha queen and alpha kings and you know how to tell the difference between you know alpha and beta. But I think what you're asking for is a balance of energy. Like you're saying because you are um in you know such high level leadership positions and extremely an alpha female that you are comfortable with. Uh, a man who operates both in balancing his masculine and feminine energy, who's in touch with both of those sides. Um, and you're open and, you know, welcoming and receiving of that. And I think for a, a second, it took you a minute to figure that out, like what exactly you were most compatible with, right? Because a lot of people don't necessarily know, they think they want one thing, and then they get that thing. And they're like, hmm, maybe I don't need, you know, that kind of personality or that kind of, you know, um, uh, type, maybe this is what's actually better for me. And I think a lot of people are learning too late in life, how to love what's good for them. If we can love earlier in our youth, what's good for us. Now we've developed, you know, a taste for vegetables versus eating candy throughout your twenties and thirties. And then you look up and you're like, damn it. I've wasted so much time getting cavities. Um, and I'm using this as a metaphor for like, you know, guy candy. Um, <laughs> but I want you guys to like take from it that it really is about like the quality and character of a person. And so when you hone into true love for yourself, you're going to also want to attract and be with someone who also has a deep love for themselves. So if you guys are dating men who don't love themselves, you're going to have some serious problems because they're not going to be able to love you as well. No. So need you guys to start making healthier decisions when it comes to how we pick our mates. Um, I'm gonna let that six foot one, that six foot ride because Lord has a funny way of, you know, of, of teaching us lessons, watching it be 5'11", just cause you put that, um, that I, mean, honestly, <laughs> I will take a man who treats me well at any Thank height. You. I Thank really you. will. Um, Thank you. I'm not, I, I like to say that, but honestly, for me at this point in the game, this person has to truly be in alignment with what I'm looking for. And I'm in alignment with what he's looking for. Very good. I love it. I love it. And you will soon be a bride yet, right? Like that's, that's what's going to come next because you are doing everything that you're supposed to be doing right now. You've worked on self. You've um, even invested in like others and trying to help others grow. And you, you know, have all the elements that you want in life. You've worked on everything from your energy to, you know, personal development to your communication skills. Like you've gone through the entire SPICY program. So we know that like you legit have put in the time and energy and invested in yourself. Now you just need to continue using your formula for the, you know, abundance life formula. And he is right around the court. Like he will literally be in front of you in no time because he's preparing himself as well. Right. And that's one thing that, you know, I think it's funny when I, I go on to like Instagram, people are like, Sierra, what was your prayer? What was your prayer, girl? I want to know. And like, I do believe that was something that was taught to me um, at like a fairly young age in my like 20s from my family, my mom and my sister, you need to be praying for your husband. So I've been praying for this man mm-hmm. since I was like 23. And every, you know, it's, it does shift and change. And now that I'm a little more mature and I've, you know, gone through this spicy life, I am praying for someone who um, not only is right for me, but this is someone who they're already, they've released everything. Like they are not like going to have, like want to be with me, but they also are like, kind of got their hand right. in the cookie mm-hmm. jar. Like I'm praying for those specific things. I'm praying for my in-laws. That my in-laws are dope. Ooh, that pray, for like, Ooh, Lord, pray for them. Pray yeah. for them. <laughs> yeah, I want to be able to go on vacation with my in-laws. Come on now. <laughs> Let's go to the Caribbean, y'all. Let's head to Mexico. Take she's my doing some, She's doing some deep manifesting right there. <laughs> some serious. That's going to take a lot of work. That's going to be some, but you could do it, Marcy. You could do it. I'd rather put it in the atmosphere now then not, you know, then to be upset later if I didn't like put at least try. I also think it's important since you're like talking about prayer that we reiterate to a part of what you're asking for when it comes to um, calling in the one or bringing this person into your life. It's not just a prayer asking for him to be built or for him to show up. We also need to be praying for ourselves, you guys, that you recognize when he is in front of you, because a lot of us weren't given the tools. We weren't given the household, raising the environment that, you know, we should have in order to really, you know, produce 
you know, the family unit that we, you know, believe that we want. And so that person may come in front of you and you not even recognize it because you have this idea of what he's supposed to be and God had a different plan for you. So um, let's pray too, that we recognize it when he's in front of us. Let's just add that little part to the prayer that you ladies are praying. Pray for discernment, that you have discernment of who you're finding. And I I think it's so funny because I think we talked about this, like what I was praying for, Mm -hmm. for my husband. And I think you were shocked because I was like, I'm praying for his heart. I'm praying for his mind and praying that like he's spiritually aligned. And you're like, oh, you're not praying that he's like, you know tall good looking thick fit like I, I'm not looking for that I'm looking like, thank God <laughs> for a person who is in the right mind and I have I to love that. that yes let them know because a lot of people are out here praying for the wrong things and so you, y'all let's get it together come on um, we just gave you guys some useful tools though for you to implement into you know how to be you know, this, you know, happier, you know, great, amazing supportive friend so that you too can be, you know, the next bride walking down the aisle. Marcy, let everybody know, you know, where they can find you at. How can they get a hold of you? Should they want to reach you or maybe plan some fabulous events for them? Well, well, well. You guys can reach out to me on Instagram. It's ebooth6676. Um, and that's pretty much every platform. So beautiful you guys can always play with my twitter or stroke my instagram at spicy Madi. go to the spicylife.com also schedule a free consultation for relationship coaching or the spicy life program you guys make sure that you click and subscribe share this episode with a friend and there you guys have it you have just been spiced the spicy life